That's a rather colourful outfit. And very tight in all the most distracting places. Still, I'm a professional and I'll endeavour to carry on. In that spirit, welcome my human friends. I remain your humble host, the multi-sighted mutant Funky M, back with another entry in our mutant thon. So, Hollywood gave us a lukewarm revenge tale with no real bite to serve as Wolverine in the beginning. They did a little better with his middle, though. But the big action climax in that movie was kinda silly, if you ask me. So, let's see what they're cooking up to serve as our favourite claw-slinging Canadian's end. <laughs> Released in 2017, Logan is a darker take on the character of James Howlett. In the late 2020s, an aging Logan undertakes a dangerous mission when a mysterious young girl with metal claws turns up on his doorstep. This one's another R-rated movie, and the swan song of actor Hugh Jackman in this role. So come with me, my human friends, into one of many possible futures for our last adventure with Wolverine at that is... Logan. It's 2029, and Logan is an old man. You know, I reckon that this is how it's actually going to go down. The adamantium on Wolverine's bones leaching into his blood and slowly poisoning him. I see it sometimes. A faint glimmer under his skin. Probably why he hasn't hit me up to go drinking in a while. Doesn't want me staring and fussing over him. Charles Xavier is losing his marbles in his dotage, and Logan is his carer. So the story goes, around about 2021, Professor X suffers a debilitating mind tremor, which kills most of the X-Men, and injures several people in a few mile radius. This is when Wolvia, Logan, whisks him off to Mexico, and leaves him in an empty silo. Far from anyone, just in case he has another really bad mind tremor while nobody's around. He talks about buying a boat so they can both live at sea and both be safe. But I reckon that Wolvie's planning off in the prof. And then eating an adamantium bullet for afters. Damn, this is a cheerful movie. He's offered a hefty bonus by a mysterious woman to take her to Canada. But it's already too late when he arrives for the pickup and Trouble finds Logan at Xavier's Mexican hideaway. As does a very angry little girl. So the story goes, around about 11 years before, which is actually sometime around now, Alkali Transigen gets hold of the DNA of several mutants, and they decide to cook up a batch of mutants of their own. Now the problem with that is that they're growing mutants from infancy, and mutant powers only usually manifest around adolescence, or younger if you've had a traumatic experience. Hey, maybe one day I'll tell you about the day my powers manifested. That was... Interesting. And after that unpleasantness, we're off on a road trip to North Dakota. But the trip is almost finished before it starts. So when Logan set up his, uh, Mexican hideout for Professor X, he asked someone to help him out. That someone was the mutant Caliban. Now Caliban's power is to be able to find and track mutants. A glorified truffle pig, he describes himself. Most likely he was an insurance policy in case old Maggers decided to descend on his frenemy. Use Charles's degenerating brain as like a weapon or something. But now, Caliban's fallen into the hands of Alkali Transigen. Which is bad news for our heroes. <laughs> heroes. Like anyone's a hero in this movie. Ah, whatever. Next scene. Except for Charles's tremor. Hard skip on the nastier parts of this rescue. Seen as how the Alkali Transigene goons get snicked bad. But yeah, our protagonists make it out okay. 
a moment of madness and a moment of kindness leads to a family dinner. But peace is short-lived, as Laura isn't the only product of Logan's DNA. Another problem with growing mutants from seed is that you're growing actual people with thoughts and feelings and desires, and then you're just going to try and turn them into soldiers? Maybe they don't want to be soldiers. And this is something that Alkali Transigen never figured into their plans. So, they had to go back to the drawing board and just straight up clone Wolverine, ramping up the angry, ramping down the human, and creating something truly terrifying. This then is X-24, who kills Professor Xavier, tries to capture Laura, and is only stopped by being rammed by a bystander's truck. And so we're back on the road. And we manage to reach North Dakota with no further mishaps. Which predictably means that things are about to go south. And so the stage is set for another brutal battle. As the forces that created these new mutants seek to reclaim them, or worse. But the Howlets don't go down without a fight. Including the newest. And it's another hard skip on the final battle between Logan and X-24. But only because it ends with Laura ending up blowing half of X-24's head off. Witness then the final moments of James Howlett. So that's how Hollywood thinks Logan's final moments are going to go down. And I had thought that if Deadpool deserved his spot on the team, then we could spare a space for the old man. But I can't very well put a dead man on the team now, can I? This isn't just another flashy X-Men movie. This is a darker, sadder, more realistic take on the end and subsequent rebirth of mutants. And much as I'm not a fan of road movies, this one at least has the conceit of being a road movie nominally set in the X-Movie world, and it's mostly a three-hander between Sir Patrick Stewart as a 90-year-old Charles Xavier, whose mind isn't what it was, Hugh Jackman's ageing Logan, who's twice as old and still more sprightly, and newcomer Daphne Keane's Laura, who spends a good portion of the film mute. And these performances are subtle and nuanced, achingly real, as we see a Wolverine who's looking to die, to finally end the saga of pain and rage and destruction that always seemed to follow him, and Charles Xavier, who's stricken with a degenerating brain and prone to mind tremors that can paralyse all about, still has moments of lucidity, and is as erudite as ever, even as he descends occasionally into profanity. And of Laura? Well, what little dialogue she gets, she delivers well, and she's certainly got her daddy's anti-social streak. Of the rest, Stephen Merchant shows a good hand for serious work as Caliban, binder of mutants, and Boyd Holbrook's good old boy Pierce is another hateable villain, even if he is second fiddle to Richard E. Grant's Dr. Rice. And the flow? Straightforward and smooth, if as episodic as a road movie usually ends up being. Still, it's a dark tale of military science gone rogue once again, as they attempted to rear new mutants to become soldiers, but ended up with rebellious children, who will become the next generation's protectors. Be warned though, this is the darkest timeline. Mutancy was suppressed and perverted, the X-Men were wiped out when Charles had a mind tremor, and Wolverine, at around 180 years old, is finally succumbing to old age and the adamantium on his skeleton. This is not a happy film, or a family-friendly popcorn actioner, and the conversation on mutant rights has been replaced with a nightmare vision of where a post-mutant world is headed, and it's not a world I want to live in. Overall, if you like art house cinema, cult road movies, and a more mature kind of X-Men themed movie, then you might like Logan, 
And I do encourage you all to see it. Once. Personally, though, I have no desire to see this movie again. It's just too dark. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. If you hated this video, I don't really blame you. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe check out where to watch this video at the link in the video description. Also, link down there is my merch store, which has cool shirts. Not like this one, but it has some cool shirts. And the Manic Expression Forum, which you should totally join. So, this is your humble host, the multi sided mutant Funky M, inviting you to join me in the not too distant future for the last in our mutant thon as we resurrect the spectre of the Dark Phoenix. Until then, see you around, humans! Yeah.